I'm Nick Everett, um, and uh, I'm going to start with a story. About eight years ago, I was working for a company local to Raleigh, North Carolina, where I live, where this conference is, is based. And yeah, and um, things went really bad, right? We, we laid off all but three of the engineers who worked in Raleigh, and I, I was one of the ones who was kept. Uh, which means no severance package for me. Uh, so I spent six months looking for my dream job. And surprise, surprise, um, I found a job that I loved. I was eminently unqualified for it, but I was hired by the Wikimedia Foundation to work on search for uh, Wikipedia and its various different language incarnations and sister sites and it was amazing and eye-opening and i learned a lot on how to sort of interact with big scary websites the first time you deploy to wikipedia is really quite a rush um you type on the command line you type deploy and then you watch the progress bars fill up and you know that if you take it down you'll lose you know a million people or whatever about looking at the site anyway um I ended up using Elasticsearch there. Uh, and the company or the foundation uh, had recently had a terrible experience working with uh, the faulted varnish. And well, they said, you need to have a good relationship with the uh, Elasticsearch core group, right? The, the core maintainers of Elasticsearch if we're going to use it. So yes, please ask to talk early and often. Uh, interrupt me. It's, it's, it's perfect. Um, so anyway, I, I, I started contributing to Elasticsearch. I opened my first pull request uh, long before we had Elasticsearch in production. I found some test thing and opened it and talked to one of the contributors, um, one of the maintainers a couple hours later, and we got it in in a day or two. And ever since, I have been a contributor to Elasticsearch. And as uh, dreams go, my dream job collapsed. And uh, things at the foundation changed. Um, it, it, it is a very unique and wonderful place with a wonderful mission, but it didn't work out for me. Um, I, uh, they, I was the chief engineer of a particular thing. They, they, they made a search thing and I decided I didn't want to be a chief engineer. So I went to go work for Elastic as an individual contributor hacking Elasticsearch. And I've pretty much done that for the past five years now. Um, I never thought I would do anything five years. That's a long time to look at any one technology, any one place. So yeah, here I am uh, here to talk about Elasticsearch because after five years, it feels a little like that's all I know, but it's it's a useful thing and people tend to like it. So I'm, I'm happy. Um, so let me share my screen. I have to admit that I'm using my children's gaming desktop because I usually use Linux and I don't feel that Linux is particularly stable for screen sharing Zoom all day. Um, it, it, it likes to crash when you screen share Zoom. So this is it. This is my presentation. Uh, you can see how organized I am. I'm, I am not a professional speaker. I'm a, very much a, a hacker, uh, and I'm even sort of doing things out of order. Um, so I just did the what is Nick, who is Nick part, uh, and I'm going to skip the the what is Elasticsearch part because, well, that doesn't feel like the right time yet. Um, I guess let's skip to the who are you people part. Uh, if we were in person, uh, this is where I would try to go around the room and uh, talk to everybody. Um, you know, get your name, what you do, what you want to do, and, uh, you know, why you're, why you're in this workshop and interested in contributing. Just say hi. <laughs> so hi. Um, I will stop Um you yeah. Know can you, they can't go on video, right? That's not a thing. Cause no, a but I, but what I can do is I can allow, I can allow everyone to talk though. So, and so we could just do it that way. We only have 14 people. Yeah. So this should work really well. So yeah. uh, all right. if you allow everyone to talk, I will go from the top of my attendees list to the bottom or else people won't have any idea 
what order to go in. So yeah. <laughs> know that you're going to be called in alphabetical order by first name. So prepare. Uh, or not, apparently Ed Ed has jumped in front of Andrew. So uh, Ed, are, are you ready? Can you tell us who you are? Right, everyone's changing order on my in my view, so that's yeah. perfect. Well, let's... as you're promoting them. Yeah. Sorry about that. Well, I just asked Ed to unmute. So hopefully Ed will hear this and unmute. And um, like the last time I was, I, I sat through uh, the Kubernetes talk. Uh, if somebody had asked me in the middle of the talk to go off, to go off mute, to, to come on mute, I would not be able to. So it's okay if you can't or don't want to. Yeah. Um, we can move on to, to whoever's next. In fact, frankly, anyone who wants to just come on off mute, let's do it. Mm. Let's do it that way. Do so you want to introduce yourself? Please do it. Uh, my name is Savannah, and I'm into data curation and ontologies and all that good stuff. Um, and I'm just interested in what Elasticsearch is. All right, that's awesome. I will have maybe I'll have some what Elasticsearch is and how it works, uh, but my plan is to go into the sort of hacking on Elasticsearch stuff pretty quickly. Um, if it turns out that that is what the that that's what people are primarily interested in is, is what Elasticsearch is and how you use it, we'll do it um, with no preparation whatsoever. We'll have that we'll have that talk instead. Can you guys hear me? Yes, go for it. Hey, um, I am Logesh, and uh, I'm here to kind of also see what what Elasticsearch is. Um, maybe you could just kind of give a brief, and then kind of cover whatever you had. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, can I go? Yeah, do it, Fabrice. Go, go, go. <laughs> sure. Hey, so I'm uh, Fabrice. I've been working with Elasticsearch in the past. Um, uh, I was I was building a search platform essentially for um, for recruiters to find engineers and other kind of uh, things. And I, I stopped working there actually for two years and a half ago, something like that. Since that, I didn't touch Elasticsearch, and I kind of miss it. So uh, well, that's why I'm here essentially. I want to get my hands a bit dirty and. Uh, Awesome. All right. Anyone else want to come off mute and introduce yourself? Hey, hey. Uh, name's uh, Jean Marcel, not related to Jean Claude Van Damme, uh, but uh, I'm a DevOps engineer. Um, I've played a little bit with uh, um, with Elasticsearch, but um, I kind of just want to learn a little bit more about it, like some of the use cases. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much why I attended. All right. If there's anyone else, please go ahead. Otherwise, uh, I will start talking about uh, introduction to Elasticsearch and, and use cases, and uh, sadly, bore Fabrice for 20 minutes or something, and then um, we'll turn around and try to get a little dirtier into how it all works, uh, and I'll break out MS Paint and all that good stuff. Anyone else want to introduce? Yes, I can go next. Uh, my name is Gabe. I'm currently a senior software engineer. Um, I work primarily in Java and I am interested in Elasticsearch as a means to, uh, as a, a custom uh, means to search a lot of application logs and like build my own tools in that space. <laughs> Oh, 
And my kid just uh, affirmed that. I hear it. I hear it. That's good. Perfect. That's what these things are. Children all. I put my screen up here uh, so that my kids may not bash it down and jump in front of the camera. But, uh, you know, two hours is a long time. They may just do it. Hi, right, Ed, you are not you do not have sound. You came from came for the hacking. All right, good. Uh, and automated test locally. I'm happy to I will get to that. All right. So um I'm gonna I am going to uh, give this talk uh, as though oh is that another person wants to introduce? If so, go ahead. If not. All right, I'm going to introduce this. I'm going to, to roll this talk as though it were um, fracking and take a longer detour into sort of how to use Elasticsearch and try to cover sort of why why it does the things that it does to, to try and not um, try and not make things uh, wrong for those of you that came and wanted a sort of general general introduction. So. Um, expects to see a bunch of JSON, a bunch of curl, and uh, probably a bunch of MS Paint as we start to describe how nodes talk to one another and why they do that. Because uh, I think that kind of talk is, is fairly useful for folks um, that need a sort of higher level about how Elasticsearch does what it does. So um, Let's do this. Those of you that are that are interested in contributing to Elasticsearch, um, or, or just those of you that are interested in contributing to open source software in general, um, go through these steps along with me. Open up GitHub and get you a GitHub account. Um, if you don't already have a GitHub account, I don't know particularly how long it takes, but you'll be a, a, a tiny bit behind. Um, Go to ah, go to GitHub slash Elastic slash Elastic Search, which I will paste into the chat. To the chat, if I can find it. Uh, actually, okay. uh, Nick, I will go ahead and oh, you got it. I just barely. Fast. I know. So look at my uh, fixing things while I'm doing presentations. All right, so go up to this button in, in the upper right, it says fork and click it. And it should take you to a page that looks like a photocopier. And then you end up waiting a good uh, few minutes while, while GitHub makes you a copy of Elasticsearch. That's sort of step one for writing any real contributions to it. Uh, step two is downloading the latest JDK, which you can just search Google for Java Development Kit, click download. download. Actually, just get, oh boy, maybe I can't. <laughs> I have a copy of it. So uh, we'll need to see how. Uh, there we go. You'll want this site here to get the latest JDK. You should um you should probably use 15. Uh 14 may work, 15 uh, is probably going to be required, frankly. Um, go and download that. And now, while you are downloading that, I will take you through a sort of a brief introduction of what Elasticsearch does. So, ignore the man behind the mirror for a moment. Oh. 
So can you see this large uh, git bash window in the middle? Yes. Perfect. Thank you very much. So um, I am running Elasticsearch. This is a thing that I promise you, and by the end of the next 20 minutes, you'll be able to do, uh, running Elasticsearch from source, um, unless we end up fighting with the JDK for a while, which is traditional, but uh, we'll work it out. So, um, oh, there it goes, downloading a, a snapshot and taking an extra few minutes right at the top of our presentation. But Elasticsearch is a distributed, restful, document store search engine thing. Um, those of you that are REST purists may not buy that, but uh, essentially you stick documents in it that look like JSON, uh, say like this document here that I've highlighted on my screen that is a description of the talk that we're giving or that I'm, that I'm giving and y'all are participating in. Um, Uh, Elasticsearch, the, the restful bit is basically that you talk to it over HTTP. So uh, that is the same thing that your browser speaks, uh, but there's sort of this lovely command line tool called curl that sort of does it for us and lets us communicate with it. Uh, if you've done a bunch of Unix stuff, you'll have bumped into curl or wcap or whatever. So you can paste. Oh, you want dash s because it keeps it from taking up the, the entire screen. So when you send this uh, this document to Elasticsearch, it happily says, "Hey, I got it." Basically, and like I said, it's a document store, so you can get the document right back out again. Um, based. 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 That's what I get for using Windows. I'm not used to it. So this is our document that we put in right here. Uh, and it does sort of standard databasey things in that you can um, do queries against it. So like this is a range query. This is like a, like a less than or greater than kind of thing. And that gets our document back out as well. Uh, we use JSON to talk to Elasticsearch, mostly because that's what people that um, like HTTP tend to like. Uh, it gets the job done, but uh, you'll see when you start writing longer and longer bits of requests to Elasticsearch that it tends to get very, very verbose. Uh, Elasticsearch on top of being just sort of regular document store, it's also got like a search engine in it, right? Um, so I can search for the word contributing, which appears, I mean, it is a search engine. Anyway, I can search for the word contributing, which matches one of the words in the title and that the way we index the documents sort of makes that automatically work, right? So you can automatically find our contributing to Elasticsearch. Finally, we're gonna use the bulk action to load a whole bunch of documents at the same time in Elasticsearch. This is, um, if you've used the relational databases, uh, you know that when you um, begin a transaction and insert a bunch of documents and then commit, uh, the, the database is flushing to the file system to, to ensure that if there's a power outage or whatever, um, you don't um, get half your data written or things along those lines. Um, Elasticsearch doesn't, doesn't have transactions and it doesn't have persistent connections uh, because it's using HTTP. So the way we, we handle this is that you end up with this bulk bulk write operation, because that's the thing that you, you tend to want to, to, to delay the, the, the f-sync for. So this will just write a whole bunch of documents, like six or something, one, two, five documents all at one time. And because it's demo data, it's basically instant. Um, and this takes the same results that we had before uh, when you added a single document and adds it all to the output. And uh, yeah, that's about, that's that. So I would like to know uh, who has uh, downloaded the JDK and um, created a fork of Elasticsearch. 
is there anyone that wants to do those things and has has yet to finish doing those things because i can stall for time if i have to all right i am going to proceed as though you have completed all those things so uh you should i have yet and will but you can continue great savannah thank you you getting stuck signing up for GitHub or something that I didn't warn people they had to do. So that that fork process, that page that looked like a photocopy should um, change to look a heck of a lot like this. Uh, this is your own copy of Elasticsearch. And it's, uh, well, got all the code in it. The way you get that code is by clicking this code button and then clicking here. You will also want to go get git, um, which if you're on Windows actually has this lovely, uh, comes with this lovely git SSH thing that I've been using as a proper console editor because Windows didn't have a a good terminal for what until a couple of years ago. So yeah, um, you'll want to execute command like you want to go to some directory and you'll want to execute a command that looks like this. Git clone and then whatever this copies, whatever clicking that button copies from. Yeah. That's also wrong. Thank you, Git. <laughs> I think my terminal is done for. You want to execute a command that looks like git clone and then whatever that paste. So it'll look like git clone git at github.com, blah, blah, blah. And that will likely prompt you for your GitHub password. Um, ignore that I don't know my own password. Um, and then it will go and download Elasticsearch. So this will download your clone of Elasticsearch. Uh, is any of this weird to anyone? Uh, if you have never used Git before, um, the answer is yes, this is weird. Uh, and if you have, you've probably gotten used to all this strangeness. Um, but while we are waiting for it to download, I will uh, give you the basic overview for Git. Uh, it is basically a system for versioning text files, versioning big directory trees of text files. Uh, the idea is that you can make some change on your local system, stage them, and then uh, write them to a shared log that everyone or write them to a log on your system with an annotation as to why you changed them that way, and then share that log with other people. That is sort of generically what Git does, and people use it in, in various sort of magic ways to build software, uh, because for the most part, software is text files. And this problem of maintaining them and not stepping on each other's toes is actually quite hard. Git does a fairly decent job of it. So because I have a cooking show style, I already could clone this sitting over here. Um, so what else did I say? Oh, I give you a second, second list of things Elasticsearch can do. So while you are still downloading, um, Uh, 
I will run it and run some more commands. Um, shoot, jump in, please. Okay, uh, it looks like Ed, it's just me, but it, it looks like Ed has a question in chat. Yeah, okay. Mostly thinking of memory, but it's surprisingly uh, processor and disintensive itself for Windows Phone. Um, if you want to open Elasticsearch in an integrated development environment, um, like IntelliJ or Eclipse, you, you're going to need about two gigs of memory because those things love memory a lot. Elasticsearch itself, um, if you happen to want to run all of the tests, uh, like all of them, all of them, um, you're going to need a couple hours, maybe 50, 60 gigabytes of memory and um, a desktop computer. The laptops tend to like levitate on their fans when they do all of that. Uh, but for the most part, if you open a, if you're if you're interested in opening a pull request, you can um, run the tests fairly uh, in a fairly targeted manner, and you don't end up needing to do that. And then you just need to sort of compile it and run one or two. Uh, so I do my day to day development on on a laptop that, um, well, frankly, because Elastic paid for it, I made them pay for a very nice one. But uh, you don't really need a super duper nice one. The biggest thing is having a bunch of memory. Uh, it, it helps a lot with the IDEs. Um, just to clone it, apparently is, it takes like a gigabyte. And doing all the compile, it's going to take another couple of gigabytes of hard drive space. Uh, it's, 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 it's rather a lot of software, frankly, to, to, to clone it and get it all running. Uh, and it's not like Java. It's not like that was something they optimized for when they made Java, the size of the executable. So, uh, well, we've got, uh, while you are cloning, um, I already did that book. I can talk about some other things uh, that Elasticsearch does. Um, um, Actually, we just did that one. We did a, a query. So Elasticsearch also does these sort of um, aggregate. We call them aggregations. They're they are a lot like uh, group bind statements in SQL. They're, the idea here is that you can um, summarize many documents that are sitting on the Elasticsearch server without having to pull them all down to your local machine. Um, so this one groups the the documents uh, by the value in a particular of a, of a particular uh, string field. Um, in this case, the track field. Uh, so you see up here that I dumped um, some things with the track networking Elasticsearch and some things with the track databases into the system. Right? Yes, I did. Um, and so when I run this query. It says index not found. That's perfect. Um, oh, because I destroyed it when I control C it and start it over. So we can just build it again. Go, go demo gods. Okay. So this is this little bit right here is the output of that aggregation where it's taking and summarizing the documents. As I said, it groups them by uh, the, the track that they're in and counts them. And because I dumped six documents into the system, talking about the uh, three of the uh, or, or three of the talks in the databases track and three of the talk in this, the track that we're in the networking Elasticsearch track, uh, it counts to three. Um, if you see here, I got other options, right? I can uh, group by time. In this case, I'm grouping by day. Um, so you see here that I made an error and I dumped one in two, two days from now, not, not tomorrow, but uh, that it does group them. Uh, and you can sort of compose these things together. Um, you can put the, this is the, this is the aggregation from up here that groups by time, and this is the aggregation that groups by term. So you can see uh, when when the classes are in particular days. And you can see that the networking Elasticsearch track I only indicate I only um, indexed the the talks for today, and you can see that 
for the databases track, I index the talk for what should be tomorrow, but I started the day after tomorrow and two talks for today. So Elasticsearch is, it sort of shines when you can use both of these things together. Uh, when, when you want to search for some particular piece of text, um, either in its very search index English and analysis ways, right? Where it's like, like you saw here that I um, was able to search for the word contributing, even though that sort of is some word inside of, inside of the title. So it shines when you need to do that, or you need to summarize lots and lots of documents. And it especially shines when you need to do both of those things together. So, um, I think it was Fabrice that said that they had built uh, a search system for uh, resumes and, and, and folks like that. Um, the way that you do that, and he's honestly going to know the heck of a lot more about it than I do, but the way you do that is, is by building some JSON document, like, there you go. So see how I, I built this JSON document that has a timestamp and a track and a title. So you'd build some JSON document that, that describes a, a, an applicant, right? Or uh, probably an applicant, frankly, and, and, and have their name and the resumes that they've submitted and the skills that they listed and just the whole text of the document, but any other stuff that you can yank out of the, the resume by whatever black magic that uh, you, you develop at your company to extract it. So how is everyone doing? My laptop has gone to sleep, so I cannot see chat one moment. Oh, now it is awake again. Okay, no extra chats. Hey, how is this different from uh, comparing a string um, through a JavaScript project or a Java project? Just You can just feed anything to a API and then do the comparison in any language, right? Oh, yeah. Certainly, right? Um, if you just have to do some string comparisons and just your, like if you've got stuff in memory, if you've got stuff that fits in, 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 in memory, then there isn't really any point in using a lot of search, right? Or, I mean, I guess one of, one of the reasons you may wish, I am pinging. Yes, so search relevancy is a good, uh, is one of the good answers, but, uh, another answer is that it's it it sort of wraps these comparisons and wraps these documents in HTTP. Um, so this it's the same sort of reason why you would use a, a database at all, right? Or a MongoDB or whatever, right? You want to put these documents somewhere that isn't your application server. Partially that's because you want to be able to shoot your application server and replace it, or because you want to be able to expand the number of application servers, but because you um, just don't want to make the application servers have enough disk space, or even have, maybe you don't even want them to have real disks, right? They have ephemeral disks that die when they go away, but the disks that you give Elasticsearch gets, gets to live. But on top of that, it's nicer because Elasticsearch uh, builds data structures up front to make, the, to make these searches fast. So when I search for the word contributing, Elasticsearch did not have to go through all of the documents in the database or in, in Elasticsearch. In fact, it, it, it only looked at one, right? Because what, what it does when you give it a document here like this is it takes these, um, it takes all of the words and it breaks, breaks them apart into words and then it builds an index with the words. Actually, it's sort of better than that here. Let's get a code editor so that I can show you. Thank you. However long that takes. The other other thing, the thing Fabrice said uh, that that I didn't get to yet is search relevancy. That, that's when you are making when you make on-site search, right? So here, let's uh, just go away. Come on. My children are going to be upset at me that I've made desktop icons, but uh, I think they'll have to be okay with it. Yes, please. All right. 
in a moment we'll go back to this. But let's talk about search relevancy. So when you go to Wikipedia and you want to search for cats, right? And you go to the search page for cats. Um, you see how here how you get cat, then cats, the disambiguation page, and then polydactyl cat, and then the musical, and then like cats and dogs, presumably the film. Yeah. Um, so without any sort of understanding of search relevancy, you just you, you'd get any one of these first, right? You'd be sorting by the last edit date, or you'd be sorting by, well, what other choices for sorts do we have? Uh, creation date, or the length of the article, or something silly. But um, we sorted by search relevance, which is this sort of nebulous term where each document that matched, and there are, you know, uh, couple hundred of them that match, right? I don't know how many matched. It doesn't actually want to tell us um, because it's expensive to calculate the total number of matches, but it's like more than 500 documents contain cat. Uh, and the fact that you get the top one on top is useful. So it assigns a score to all of them and basically sorts by score. That's this concept of search relevancy. Another thing that it does that is useful is like I said, it cuts these the words into it cuts text into words, right? So if you have, um, say I wanted to index, index this. Um, the first thing it does is it takes the whole, the whole big long thing and it indexes that as a keyword. So if you wanna search for an exact match, you can do it. But then the next thing it does is, is it analyzes it. And, and you can think of analysis as like, uh, it's sort of this, lossy transformation that you can do to text that will make it so that when you ask for the text back, you get the same thing. So um, we'll use my search for cats as a, as a first example and then bounce to this other one next. When you search for uh, Wikipedia for cats, um, Elasticsearch will take that word and, and it will say, well, that's just one word, one English word, so it doesn't have to do any work there. And then it will run it through a bunch of English um, token filters. These are things that, that modify the word. So they take the word cats and they strip off the S, right? Um, and search for that word. So in particular, we found the word for cats, right? Or we found the page for cat, not cats. It, it, it figured out that cat is, is more important than what I, for what I search for than that. Uh, another thing that ends up happening is if you search for cat and dog, right? Um, so you search for cat, cat, let's search for cat dog, right? Let's see what that manages. Not Catholic church. It actually found, finds a television show called cat dog, which is pretty good. Um, that's a pretty good match. Um, but what, what this thing does is it cuts this into two words, right? The word cat and then the word do dog. And then it does a search for, for pages that contain the word cat, and pages that contain the word dog, and then pages that contain the words when they're near one another. Um, hey, Nick, just shoot. wanted to let you know we got five minutes left in this half. Oh, that's perfect. So okay. we can spend the next half doing some hacking things and uh, sort of talking about the way things fit together. Um, but we can spend the next five minutes talking about search relevancy and how these things are useful. Um, in a sort of more, uh, a more like a bigger example, imagine the word like running, right? How should, I, you know, when you wanna do a search for something like that, you, you end up wanting to, 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 to remove the N and ING part of it and, and cut it down. So there's sort of a lot of things built in um, to, to Elasticsearch to, to try to find the thing that you're looking for. And this is actually a really kind of an interesting game uh, because as you do more and more transformations, you make the search find more and more and more results, but you don't necessarily make the results better, right? If, if you search for the word running and, and you want to find documents that literally contain the word running and not the word run, then sometimes it's difficult to do that. Um, 
Like this is why if you go to Google and you search for running, you get the right answer. Google's very good at this. No, Google, you don't get to know my location. Um, but like, this is why Google has this quote operator, right? And, and you get to, to get uh, exact matches. And we have that too, right? Um, to be or not to be. Um, that's strange. Interesting. I don't know why that didn't work. But anyway, uh, when you search for lots of words, we tend to try and, and do other tricks to make the thing work better. Uh, these words to be or not to be are so, such common English words that if we didn't play tricks and try to do things like find phrases together, uh, you'd end up with uh, well, every, every single English Wikipedia page would come back. All right, I think that's our five minutes, uh, or at least pretty close to it. Pretty so, close. Let's do it this way. Um, if you want to talk about hacking, stick around. If you are interested in other sort of topics that have to do with um, why you would use Elasticsearch or how, how you would use it for certain things or how you want to relate it to um, certain uh, certain ways data is structured, uh, head to the Elastic booth and talk to those lovely folks, either uh, tomorrow morning, which will, will be me, that is my official booth duty, or right now. Uh, and you will talk to uh, some folks who honestly are probably going to know more about how you apply Elasticsearch to different use cases than I do, right? I, as I said, I I, for better or worse, I built this page that you're looking at, right? And so I understand how you'd use Elasticsearch for searching logs, and I understand Elasticsearch, how, you, how you'd use Elasticsearch for searching uh, corpuses of text that look like um, encyclopedias or dictionaries or resumes or whatever. So I understand those two use cases, but once you start talking about uh, how you use Elasticsearch uh, to handle uh, security events and, 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 and suss out intruders and stuff like that, which are all products that are built on Elastic or Elasticsearch by Elastic the company. I, I don't know, frankly, and I would go and ask the people at my booth for help if you asked me anyway. So um, if that's what the, the kind of thing you're interested in, go and ask the booth either today or tomorrow. And if you want to learn more about hacking, come back in what is it 15 15 whole Min minutes 15 whole all right so let's let's get to this uh so i presume everyone that is left is interested in hacking elastic search or um if you are not interested you're interested in watching me flail around trying to explain it to people that are which sounds like fun to me frankly so i hope you enjoy it so um if you have finished cloning Elasticsearch, you can, you should end up somewhere like this. Um, you should end up with a directory called Elasticsearch, and you probably will end up with your GDK that you've downloaded. And if you did what I did, you will have Git bash or um, probably real bash uh, sitting around. And if you don't use bash, you know better than I do what to do. So uh, head into the Elasticsearch directory. Uh, there's a zillion, zillion files in here. Uh, I suggest opening them in a regular old text editor first and then going to an IDE later. Um, the highlights are uh, contributing.md and testing.ascii.doc. Uh, these show two very interesting things. Um, one that uh, we care very much about people wanting to to, to contribute code, uh, and two, that we cannot decide on a text, like on a documentation file format. We've got notice.txt, readme.ascii.doc, contributing.md, and everything in between. So um, Elasticsearch is built with Gradle. The, the thing that I suggest that you do is run it first uh, before trying to import it into, into your favorite IDE. The way that you run it is by running uh, the Gradle W executable. If you are on Windows and do not have git bash, then you will want the Gradle W dot bat executable. And so help you God for being on Windows without bash. Uh, good luck. Um, so you'll want to run Gradle W run 
and hit enter. And then, oh, there's one of my children. She avoided me. Maybe somebody has warned her. Anyway, go run Gradle over you run. Um, and then let Gradle do its thing. Gradle in the grand tradition of every Java build toolkit. Yes, please do. You have permission to talk. Please jump in. Uh, Gradle in the tr grand tradition of any Java build tool downloads 500 megabytes of stuff, uh, compiles stuff, then downloads another 500 megabytes of stuff, and then compiles your code. Uh, and then runs it. Uh, if you're curious about why we use Gradle instead of the, the massive zoo of build tools, I'd be happy to talk about how I was involved in that process. But um, you should, after something like two or three minutes or more, depending on your CPU and disk speed, uh, get something that looks very like this. Um, you will see that way, way above, there's a line that says starting, and you will see an amazing number of extra stuff. Um, when it gets quiet, it's ready. Uh, this, the, it, it used to be, our, our startup used to be cleaner, but now it's, it's, it's gotten loud again. And someone's got to go and, and, and make this word the actual signal that we're ready. But for, for, uh, for now, um, when it gets quiet, it's ready. And Elasticsearch will be available at port 8080 uh, with the password, uh, with the user Elastic, the password, password. Um, or sorry, it'll be available at port 9200. Um, that uh, default username and password is a default for development only. If it's when you actually download it and run it, it'll scramble something up for you and you'll have to deal with it there. Um, it's been so many years since I did that. I actually couldn't tell you uh, how to do it. Follow the docs. Uh, I hope they're good now. Um, they, they, they were good before. Anyway, um, it, for development, you run um, Gradle, or you run a Gradle run, like I said, and then you um, can curl on um, port 9200 with the username Elastic and the password. Uh, password. Okay, so folks, uh, where to go from here? Some folks said that they were interested in running tests. Some folks said that they were interested in hacking and seeing things. Um, and some folks were interested in other things and I sent them to the booth. So um, for running particular tests, actually let's start with an IDE first, get it open on an IDE, then go to tests while the IDE is opening it and then come back to the IDE. Is that okay with everyone? If not, come off mute and tell me. And if you don't have permission to come off mute, I'm very sorry. There's only one person and it's because he's running an old version. So Matt, mm. sorry about that. Sorry. Silent sounds like a, like assent, but yes, everyone, I have taken, you do not have to raise your hand, so I can trust we can all be grown-ups in a small group of 10. If you have comments, just, just have at it. So yeah. let's make this a nice, it, nice interactive thing at the end of the day. All right, so um, you have two choices if you want to open Elasticsearch up in an IDE. And, and, and realistically, you have one choice. If you are not in love with Eclipse, you should use IntelliJ. So I will say this again. If you are not in love with Eclipse, go get IntelliJ, download it, install it, and start it. I am in love with Eclipse and have used it for so long and am used to its terrible, terrible, terrible quirks. So that's all I can show you. And here it is, having imported Elasticsearch. Uh, apparently there are many, oh yes, I can go through these to fix these. Okay, so when you start, at least in Eclipse, you go import Gradle project and then point it at the root of Elasticsearch and then wait five minutes for it to do its importing. Uh, I suspect IntelliJ is, is quite similar. Um, the instructions for IntelliJ 
are available in contributing.md. So we give a specific version that you need to get and a way to get it apparently. I have to get it all open. Got it. Once you have it open, um, Eclipse has a few a few extra rules that you have to do, but you can you can see me do them here. Um, I will just do them while we're here so you can see them. Um, you have to fix the import order because Eclipse be, because of Java, basically. Don't Java, the way Java is. Uh, you import a million things. So you want to import you want to import our standard import order. Um, change these to a very big number, apparently not that big, because we never use those. Um, oh, and it looks like we have a question from Ed in chat. Is it reasonable to do everything in VS Code? You find yourself wanting IntelliJ or Eclipse real fast. Um, I have never got VS Code useful for debugging. Um, I have gotten it working fairly well with the uh, the IntelliJ or sorry the the uh, compiler server for Java. So the VS Code Java plugin, I have gotten that working fairly well. It does a pretty reasonable job. Um, Officially, we support Eclipse and IntelliJ and running it on the command line. Uh, and, and the command line is obviously the, the real, um, real version. Um, like the, that's what, that's what uh, Jenkins does and that's what builds the packages and everything. But um, if you need help, we actually will support uh, Eclipse and the, the um, command line. If you like Emacs quite a lot, uh, there are a couple of folks who use Emacs for hacking Elasticsearch. I don't know how they do it or what they do, but if you search for uh, hacking Elasticsearch with Emacs, you will probably find blogs of theirs where they talk about how to do it. Um, if you see there's a dearlocals.el file, that's that's for Emacs Lisp. That this all this stuff is the configuration for the people that like to hack Elasticsearch and Emacs. Uh, so yeah, if, if that's your if that's your editor of choice, um, I use both IntelliJ and or sorry, I use both VS Code and Eclipse. I use VS Code for opening um, YAML files like uh, enjoy.yaml, for instance. Oh, that's lovely. So like these YAML files are some of our some of our integration tests. So I, I use this for our tests because I find it to be easier to use than Eclipse. But for um, these for for actually running the tests inside of it, um, I use Eclipse. So the other thing you have to do to make Eclipse happy is uh, documented in contributing. There's something about cyclical dependencies you have to turn off. Oh, and the file, and there's a instructions for importing the editor. But uh, we can ignore that. Let's just it's in here somewhere. Java compiler errors warning cycle. Oh well, we'll ignore it for now, because that's how we do presentations. We do them with a million errors. Whatever. So, um, Elasticsearch has, is broken up into like a million billion modules. Um, you'll see that we have uh, a build tools, which is how you, that's the actual Gradle project that builds Elasticsearch. In and of itself, that Gradle project is a many, many thousands of lines piece of code. 
uh, so it's fairly complex. Um, the client is a high level and a low level REST client uh, to talk to Elasticsearch. All of this stuff is involved in, in building Elasticsearch uh, dis distributions. Actually, it goes all the way down to here. Uh, some of these, these, these tools are things that are shipped with the Elasticsearch distribution, um, but are not run uh, inside of the server of Elasticsearch. Others of these are like, uh, these, these packages are for like RPM and Deb. Um, Docker is for our Docker container. We make a million billion archives and these are for building backwards compatibility tests. The actual core of Elasticsearch that you end up playing with is in the server, which if I can find the letter S, um, if you have imported uh, this in Linux or um, OS X, you will not see all these underscores. You'll see colons because that's the standard way that Gradle's, Gradle writes its files um, or Gradle, Gradle separates its, its projects. Uh, Windows does not allow colons in project names because reasons. And so we just replace them with underscores because underscores is, it allows them. So yeah, this is this is all the Elasticsearch. This is the code for the core of Elasticsearch. Uh, sort of two interesting things about this repository as we talk about it, uh, crack it open in the editor. Uh, this repository contains uh, files licensed under two different licenses. And you can generally look at the top of every file to, to see the license. Uh, these are uh, under the Apache 2 license. So everything, uh, basically everything outside of the XPAC directory is licensed under the Apache 2 license. And then everything in the XPAC directory is licensed um, under this thing called the Elastic license. The Elastic license is a um, license, license that lets folks read uh, and write and contribute software and run it in uh, for tests and things like that. Um, but then has to get a has to get a um, a license for using the software uh, from Elastic. So essentially, uh, Elasticsearch is a big open source project with many many plugins. Some of which are uh, also Apache licensed. Others are licensed with this fairly open Elastic license that lets folks read and write and file bugs. Uh, in GitHub and that sort of thing, um, but not all of the, you do not have permission to do everything that you would do with the Apache license stuff. The Apache license lets you do whatever you want with the software, right? Um, some of the things that are in the XPAC directory are also free, right? Uh, but they are, they are free, but licensed. They're like free as in beer, not free as in speech. Anyway, um, if you don't know that, that is a very old open source expression, I guess. Anyway, um, let's talk about running tests for a, a minute before we dive too deep. Let's open up, let's open up some actions. All right, and then we'll get to tests. So do any of y'all remember? how I perform this bulk action over here. This action looks like this, under, test underscore bulk, and then has this refresh and pretty operand, uh, refresh and pretty URL parent. So that is defined by the rest bulk action. Um, you see here that I use open type. I have no idea what, what directory this is in. I know that it's in the, the, uh, the server. So if I click this, I know that this is under the, the server. So this is sort of shipped with the core of Elasticsearch. It's not in a, not in a plugin. It's not in a module, which are plugins in the core. But um, I don't actually know what package this is in. That's pretty standard for folks that hack Java. Um, these packages, you end up with millions and billions of different packages, directories containing the software. And, then you never know. Um, so this rest bulk action uh, defines where the thing is. And you see here that it's got uh, four different patterns. 
um, you can put or post this action and you can specify the index or not. Uh, and you see here that uh, that parameter refresh that I used is, is here, right? Uh, so I use this refresh parameter uh, just without, without setting it to a value. So you could actually jump back and see how this parsing works. This request.params will get you a string. Um, uh, I believe it gets, it gets some special, well, let's check. I believe it gets the empty string if you define it but don't set a value. So you see we have some special code to parse the parse the, these refresh parameters uh, here indeed the empty string which is what I passed in uh, for refresh um, it gets immediate refresh but you also have the choice of uh, no refresh or uh, wait for refresh so uh, many many years ago you, you this used to be a boolean as, as you can probably tell so when you uh, did a bulk operation um, that open in VS Code to play with it. When you did a bulk operation, you used to be able to do refresh without anything, and that would force a force a refresh to make your documents visible. Um, you used to be able to do refresh true to do the same thing, or refresh false, which was the default, so you could leave it off, and that would not not perform the uh, Elasticsearch refresh. So uh, that's sort of the basics of uh, a little bit of basics of like how parsing, how request parsing goes. Uh, let's look at how, how our requests are actually executed. So uh, this thing builds this bulk request object, right? So this is a request to further down in the system. Elasticsearch sort of respects the, uh, back in the day, people talked about Java applications and layers, right? How there was like a REST layer and a, and a application layer and a, uh, storage layer or something. Elasticsearch doesn't, I don't think any application ever really did that. Elasticsearch has a REST layer and then it's got everything else. Uh, I think that's actually pretty normal for most people that said they did these layers. Anyway, this bulk request is the way that you transport things between the, the REST layer, this REST bulk action, and the next layer. So the bulk request can contain sort of a bazillion different things. Um, it also has this fairly esoteric looking method here that, uh, any guesses what this actually does? I give it a few seconds in the chat to, to guess. It's kind of fun. So this allows Elasticsearch to throw the request over the wire. This uh, stream input is, is the name of the thing that we use uh, to read off the wire and stream output is the name that we use to write the thing to the wire. So somewhere else in this um, object, there is a, there is a uh, write to method that takes a stream output that is the mirror of this. So you can put these things over the wire. Otherwise, um, it's just this holder for these doc write requests. So uh, it's actually executed by a thing called transport bulk action. Transport bulk action, the, the name transport I'll get to, but for now you can understand everything with the name transport in front of it, with the word transport in front of it is the actual implementation of a method, or the implementation of some some bulk right or some request, uh, and if we scroll down, it has a method called do execute. In, in grand Java tradition, there was a method called execute that we had to uh, has to have shared code, and now the method that everyone implements is called do execute, and this method. Um, applies a couple of funny things, but for the most part, what it what its job is to do, it, what its job is, is to group all of the all of the lines of the bulk request to group this line and this line and this line and this line into uh, a shard bulk request. So, Elasticsearch is 
like it, it, it's it's claim to fame. It's 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 a nice thing is that you can run this on more than one node, and they'll form a cluster and be able to talk to each other, and, and it all works fairly simply. Uh, the way that it all works fairly simply is that indices can be divided into shards, and when you write a document, we take the ID and we hash the ID and we drop it. We we just determine which shard should hold the document based on that ID. That is literally what this code that we're looking at does. It grabs all of the, let's see, where we, if we can actually find the hashing um, method in here. It, it's not, it's, it's actually gonna be buried apparently. <laughs> oh well, um, there we go. It's going to be in here somewhere. This is where, ah, here we go, request by shard. So wherever we built this, oh, here. Um, operate, here we go. This, this and this performs the hashing, this line here. So that, if you end up diving in, is where you, where you can look up the hashing algorithm and figure out what's going on. Many years ago, we accidentally changed the hashing algorithm and broke everything. Uh, we have since developed much, much better tests that would have caught that automatically. So um, let's talk about running tests. The most basic tests you can run are just unit tests. Uh, so. Let's look at what I was running recently. Like, I was looking at the range aggregator tests. So you can just run these. Oh, God. OK, I can't run them without fixing everything. But you can just run them in your IDE by clicking a button. And it will run them as just regular test cases. We use the. Uh, very, very old style uh, JUnit2 uh, marker for tests. Uh, all the methods that are tests are public and have the word test in their name, in the front of their name. Um, that's gone out of style. People now put annotations on the methods to, to mark things as tests. Uh, but meh, we keep doing this and, and it works for us. You can run this same method you can run this same test on the command line. Um, and, and there are other tests that you sort of have to run on the command line. But you can run the test on the command line. I'm going to here, control C out of your Elasticsearch. I'm doing Gradle W uh, minus P server to pick the server subproject because this test is in the server subproject, which you can tell by scrolling way up and seeing that it's in here. Um, the test that the tests dot class and then a glob pattern to select the class. So this will go compile as much stuff as it needs to do into the tests. So this is the authoritative run of the tests, running running this way versus running in your IDE. So when folks ask, um, you know, when you when you asked about running VS Code. I did that for like six months and it worked okay. Uh, but uh, not being able to, to debug unit tests is, uh, was sort of a big, big pain. So yeah, this ends up having to compile the other half of the world, right? I, I suspect that Elasticsearch has more tests than it has code. Uh, that's also pretty normal for software projects, as I've come to realize. Um, and yeah, uh, Zoom is eating up our CPU. So that's why I'm, I'm stalling for time while uh, the server compiled test Java is now just finishing. Uh, so now it will boot up the test runner. Um, Elasticsearch has somewhere between three 
somewhere between two and four different kinds of tests. Um, it has the kind of tests that uh, everyone is used to in Java, and that's the ones I just showed you, right? It has these uh, unit tests. So that actually executed it. And, and I promise you it wouldn't take a minute, 26 seconds. Most of the time, uh, most of that was spent compiling and, and waiting on Zoom, <laughs> frankly. Uh, but it is significantly faster to be able to run it in your ID if you can. And there we go. That ran all 34 test methods on this class. I'm not sure where they all came from, but they're mostly there. Um, the other sort of tests that we have are uh, tests that stand up an entire Elasticsearch cluster inside of a unit test. These are really wonderful and really terrible at the same time. Um, they all extend from this ES Intec test case class. And I'm gonna find us a good example of one. It used to be that these were the only way that you could run complex tests. So you ended up using, you ended up with everything being tested this way. Um, let's try yeah, score IT, here we go. So this is one of them, right? This tests uh, just a query. It tests a fairly simple query. Uh, but it, it stands up a whole Elasticsearch cluster with maybe four or five Elasticsearch nodes in the unit tests in the same JVM all communicating with itself. And it can take quite a while. Um, and you can run that in your IDE and it works, uh, which is good, but it is very not real. It's, it's very lying. Um, it, 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 it doesn't... First of all, it uses these, these scripts that aren't real scripts. You can see that uh, you know, we, we have a script here called uh, doc num value, and that literally is implemented right here in Java, right next to it. Um, so it's not using the real scripting language that comes with Elasticsearch. Um, if you want to do real tests, uh, there are rest tests that um, you can execute. And these ones, um, this, they are not actually contained in the server, but uh, they're sort of in other spots. Let's do like um, Oh, okay. Ah, oh, here we go. Things like testing. This is like a test where we uh, try to use um, Elasticsearch, where we try to communicate with Elasticsearch uh, inside of a Wildfly server to make sure that the uh, that that our that our test client doesn't blow up inside of Wildfly. In or that our regular client doesn't blow up inside of Wildfly. Uh, in addition, we also have these YAML tests that I sort of showed folks. Um, these tests are uh, shared between Elasticsearch's clients and Elasticsearch. So when you run these tests, um, these those ones you can run with a command like, this, uh, the REST API spec directory has most of them in it, and that will run um, zillions and zillions of tests that we've got for Elasticsearch that we share with the clients. In addition, addition, uh, we also do some magic to the uh, to the documentation. So. I do this uh, if I type properly. Um, so if you look over here, we have a docs directory, right? And then we have things like uh, in the reference, we talk about how you use the terms aggregation. This is one that I actually showed you. And you know, we say things like, oh, this is this is what it looks like. You perform a search with the, the these ags here. Um, but then we have 
sneaky stuff like this. And this is a comment that hides the input from the documentation. So these are all actually turned into tests and, and we execute this first and then we execute this. Uh, and so when you want to try and run, um, rather when you run the docs check, that's what happens. It, it, it takes, takes the examples from the documentation and turns them into tests. So uh, I have shown people uh, where you can find implementations of things. And I've shown folks, uh, rather I've given you a whirlwind tour of where the tests are and how you run them. Where would folks like to go from here? What work needs to be done? Lots of work. Let's look up. So that is something I even said I would do in the description. So we currently have 22. 2,652 open issues. Exactly which of them are things that a contributor could do are difficult to say, but we have a good first issue, um, which has 33 open issues. So that absolutely counts. And I know because I've been watching um, this one go by, that it is a good first issue. I was involved in talking about talking to some people uh, about it. So yeah, if you search for good first issue, uh, it is the label good first issue. You should find issues that we think probably are good first issues. Um, some of them, as you go back further in time, they were issues we thought were a good first issue, but maybe just because they haven't been done for uh, <laughs> seven seven years. They might. This might be a lie. Um, so I wouldn't believe a good first issue when you go too far back. I am going to take that as as something I have to do in the next few days to try to clean up. To try to clean this up because some of these are. They're just too old to be good first issues. They're, they're, the code base has changed so much in seven years that any, any guess somebody had um, as to whether this was a good first issue can't be a good guess anymore. So if you are interested in a first issue, I actually, uh, oops, I suggest this one here, option to remove key as string from aggregations response. Uh, 63898. And I can show you exactly what they're talking about. When we ran our lovely aggregation, let's, let's make this a greater run again. When we ran our lovely aggregation, which was on this demo two page, um, say this one here, where we were grouping by track. Let's steal this. Wait for that to start and paste. Oh, so it's not, that's not it. I apologize. It's it's one that looks like this. When we were grouping by, yeah, here's the one where we group by track. That one doesn't have it. <laughs> um, I lied, that one doesn't have it, but this one does. When we were grouping by day, see how we have key as string here? Um, 
a lot of applications don't need this and it's sort of a waste of time to make it uh, right we don't need to 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 format the string we don't need to build it we don't need to send it across the wire we don't need any of that garbage if the application on the other side is just going to throw the key as string away uh, so um, if you look, so this is in the uh, the date histogram response. So if we crack open Eclipse, that is in a class called internal date histogram. The response objects for aggregations all start with the word internal for a reason that made sense five years ago, but hasn't made sense for three years. Um, if you search for a method called 2x content, you'll see this is exactly how we format it here. We see if format is not raw, then format this thing. Uh, and our format is not raw in the case of dates because, well, um, oh, that's interesting. You probably could request it raw already. So maybe we can close this issue. Maybe it's not a real issue. Um, they may, so the, the issue is make an option to disable rendering this because it, it could be a waste of time to render it and a lot of people don't need it. Um, there may already in fact be such an option, uh, in which case somebody should write that down. But um, if it turns out that that's not true, this is a great first issue because not only because I know exactly where it is so I can talk to anyone who wants to work on it. But also, um, I think it's not particularly involved to get it fixed, to introduce an extra option to make that a, a thing that um, we can remove. So yeah, as I said, go and look at um, good first issues. Uh, I can talk a little bit about the pull request process. Uh, when you open a pull request to Elasticsearch, uh, typically target the master branch. Uh, that is sort of what will happen by default if you're using GitHub. Um, it's not required, but I tend to write like paragraphs of markdown that GitHub turns into some lovely description for people. Uh, sometimes, certainly for your first stuff, it'll be a lot shorter, right? Because you'll be doing a lot smaller things. Um, but yeah, the the uh, pull request, the description in in the Git commits turn into Markdown, uh, and we review it. We go through the sort of standard review process as you'd imagine uh, any open source project does. So this is you open up, um, you open up the pull request with a bunch of code, and you wait for one of the maintainers uh, to to review it and talk about it, and we all go through this process. Um, there, there, there are uh, some. There are some cases where maintainers can push code that is not reviewed, but it's mostly just to do things like uh, turn off broken tests temporarily until somebody can get to them. Things like that. Uh, for for the most part, uh, we all go through this code review process. And um, if you are curious, I will never give this up. You will have to. You will have to take code review from my, my cold dead fingers. Uh, the fact that every commit goes through code review and every commit has to be um, looked at by another person is wonderful. Partly, primarily because it sets up a dynamic where you have to be nice to each other. You have to try to understand what the other person is doing and you have to try to understand why they're doing it. And you have to try to help the people that are reviewing your code to try and understand what you're doing. So um, it sort of forces you to go back and forth with each other and get on board with what's going on. Uh, this is all pretty standard stuff, but it's all pretty standard stuff for an open source project, but I'm frankly really glad we have it. So yeah, any other questions? Oh, we have about five minutes left before we're done. 
put a quick question actually. Um, I know that it's uh, Hacktoberfest. So I'm wondering if you guys are running something like that or if you're participating. Not that I know of. Um, I should look, but I, I don't think so. Um, we have a program for, like the company has a program for contributors where they try to celebrate contributors, uh, you know, uh, all the time and they you know, try to promote contributors and make sure they can they get invited to conferences and things like that. Um, oddly, I will turn this. Um, oddly, uh, a lot of the contributors nowadays don't come contributing to Elasticsearch. They come contributing to other projects uh, that are under the Elastic umbrella. I don't know why. Um, you know, part of that is Java is Java, right? Uh, people aren't in love with it, uh, but it gets the job done, right? All right, any other questions for the next two minutes? Any other things to talk about? Not going to answer that pressing question from Travis. Oh, but it didn't. I know. Um, <laughs> that is an that is an old old joke, uh, and it, it didn't go to. It, he sent it to all panelists, not everyone. Pro oh. tip for those of you that um, that uh, are going to be doing chat. Um, uh, there is a drop down under two and um, in in Zoom, and you should always 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 switch it to all panelists and attendees. If you don't do that, um, it tends to default to all panelists, so only the speaker gets the message. And if the speaker isn't looking, they'll never see it. Um, and in general, in these in these things, like it's nice to have. Um, it's nice to have this sort of ongoing conversation. And it looks to me like also Zoom defaults to, to switching the two back to whoever last sent the message for some reason. Um, so, so as soon as Travis sends me a message to me, it defaults to for me trying to send a private message back to him. It's terrible. Uh, other resources uh, that I'd recommend, YouTube videos and walkthroughs. Um, there aren't a whole lot of uh, YouTube videos are walkthroughs of the Elasticsearch code base. There was me giving a presentation fairly similar to this, but much, much shorter, uh, and two, two or three years ago at Elasticon. So you can certainly find it, but I don't think it's any good, partly because I don't think I'm super great at giving these, and partly because, frankly, three years is a long time, and things change in three years. And, and also, it's a different setting, right? Like doing these things, um, this setting is, is rough because I can't go to your laptop and talk to you and sort of understand the things you want to do. And, you know, one thing I really miss about this is like, I have to ask, all right, who's done cloning? Who's doing this? And, you know, is this a thing? Uh, you know, I have to, I can't just go and, and, and look and see where you are. I think we could have, we could have done more in person. But otherwise, um, the other sort of part of this is, is it is nice that I have a big screen and I can show pieces and I can bring out the IDE and, and um, sort of move around and try to try to find places, right? This is this is good. Um, to be honest, if you if you have more uh, questions. Uh, about how you might uh, go about with some pull request. Uh, if you reply to an issue saying, hey, I'd like to work on this issue, and uh, you know, I think maybe this is the right way to start, anyone would happily help you. Also, I will type in the Zoom chat uh, my email address, and you can send me an email. Uh, that's Elasticsearch as a project is sort of big enough that that is not something that we do very much, um, but we, you know, I would be quite ha quite happy to help anyone that, that's sat through two hours of me blabbering on about Elasticsearch now. Yeah, so send me an email if you have any questions or want to do anything.